Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to CryoFX YouTube channel. So today's video, we're gonna talk about how a sparkler machine works. Yes, how a sparkler machine works. Also known as a Chauvin sparkler, or you could Google something like, how does a cold spark machine work? Any of those are gonna show you how a cold spark machine works, but how does a Chauvin sparkler machine work as a very specific brand of spark machines. I would say one of the better brands on the market just due to the build, due to the internal components and the construction, the type of components that are inside. However, that's not what this video is about. I just simply want to show you how to use the machine so that those of you that have the machine, you know how to use it when you're setting it up. Now, let me just preface this video and tell you right off the bat that these machines are already plugged in. They're already heated up and they're already been heated up for a little bit now, probably about 10 minutes. Now, the reason why that is, is to keep the video short and get straight to the point, I wanna show you how these work. They will take about 10 minutes to heat up. I don't think that you wanna be sitting on this video for longer than 10 minutes watching these heat up while I talk and just ramble on. So, with that said, taking into account that these are already heated up, we have to pretend like they are not. So when you normally get these spark machines, they won't be plugged in for obvious reasons and you will have to plug them in and you'll have to let them heat up. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna take the spark machines out of the box. You'll wanna set them down where you're gonna set them down. You wanna take your cords. Some of the cords that you may have are a power con cable, which has a blue tip on the end as shown right here on this, on this spark machine and the other end is a regular power cord and that power cord will be plugged in. You already know that, the blue power con plugged into the machine. Now, these machines operate in two different aspects. One of them is with DMX cables. If you don't know what DMX cables are and you don't know what a DMX system is, well, then you can Google a video and you can find that out or maybe we'll make another video later on. Leave a comment in the section below if you'd like to learn about that and I have no problem making one of those videos. But for the purpose of this video, that's what we're using. We're using DMX cables. Now, the other option is actually using a wireless remote. I personally go against the wireless remotes and the reason being is these RF frequencies that go between the remote and the spark machine itself could get interrupted. Now, normally when you use these spark machines, it's for a wedding, it's for a corporate event, it's for something like that. And the thing is, is you don't want to have this interrupted. When you push the button, you want that machine to Throw sparks is what it does. The last thing you'd want is to be jerking around with the button or have your frequency interrupted, which I have been on weddings before and I've had mic frequencies, I've had remote frequencies, some of the camera operators, they run different frequencies with their wireless flashes. All of those could affect the wireless remote and that's something that would just be a downer and it would be problematic at that point when you're using it. So I personally don't like the remotes, but that's just me. The other option that we're using here is the DMX cables with a DMX board. Now this is a Chave Obey 40, probably overkill for this. However, these machines take two channels of DMX each. One channel is going to heat the machine, turn it on and off. The other one, or sorry, it's gonna heat it or not, or keep the heater on, have the heater not on. The other machine is actually gonna throw, or sorry, I'm getting so ahead of myself here. The other channel, is going to actually throw the sparks. Now, there's two settings on this machine and I'm not gonna edit that out because I wanna just be real with you guys here. So, there's gonna be two settings on the machines. One of them is to have the machine heat the entire time and then one of the channels will just automatically, when you move the slider up and down or you activate the channel, throw sparks. Now, it still requires two DMX channels. Even if you have it set to where the machine automatically heats, like both of these are right now, I go here, channel one, which these are both set to DMX channel one on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and activate, and you can see it throws sparks. These are automatically heating. Well, they require two channels. Channel two is the heating channel. However, that functions off. Channel two is not activated on my DMX controller. Now, if I switch the mode on the machines themselves, and I made it to where the mode on the machines allowed me to turn the heater on or off. Let's say that I have these plugged in, I'm on an event, and I don't want these sitting there heating the entire time and just wasting a ton of electricity, puts uh, hours on the machine. What I can do is I can put it to that second mode where it allows me to turn that heater on and off. 
Obviously, if the heater's off, the machines aren't going to be primed and heated, and so the other channel that spits sparks out or allows the machine to spit the sparks out will not do that. So that's just to kind of cover how these work and more so how a cold spark machine works. <laughs> yes, or cold spark machine instructions. So with that said, the wireless remote has some different abilities as well. You have an on, one, two, three on, so different uh, levels of how what the sparks are that come out. Also, you have a set, a clear, a five second, a one second, and then a 30 second. And that's going off the remote, the remote right here. I'll do a close up of that. So if we do zoom in on that, that you can see that. Otherwise, we'll have a link in the description to the manual and you can see what type of battery, how the remote works, what the buttons on the remote are. These do take a 12 volt, 23 amp battery. It's a special battery. Not, not something you can't get at Walmart or something else. However, if you do rent these from us, we will ship this with no battery in it. That way we can abide by any shipping rules, any flight rules, things like that. Just we would rather ship it with no battery. Unfortunately, the battery is on you. That way you can make sure you have a good battery and it just makes it so much easier because the last thing that we would want is somebody to rent these and then it gets held up because the battery for whatever reason and you don't get your rental. So enough about that. Now, how do you set these up? Let's get back to the basics here. You get the spark machines, your cold spark machine or your Chauvin sparkler minis, which these are. These are Chauvin sparkler minis. Both of them are hooked up. I have one of them facing uh, towards you, the front. The other one, uh, the back side is facing towards you. So that way you can see both of them. So you don't want to set that up in real life. I know that you know that, but just making sure you never know. So what you want to do is you want to set these where you're going to set them. Then you're gonna run your power cords. When you run your power cords, you wanna make sure that you have enough power cord, that the power cord is thick enough because if it's thin enough and the longer you run it, those things will tend to heat up. These draw some amps. So case in point, these are 480 watts. Well, I don't know the amps off the top of my head, but I can tell you this, A times V equals W. So amps times volts equals watts. Watts divided by amps or watts divided by volts will give you the missing number. It's a math equation. So 110 divided by, sorry, so 480 watts, A times V equals W. So 480 divided by the 110, you're looking at about four amps a piece. So four and four is eight. These are drawing about eight amps. Well, if you go ahead and you put two more on here, that's about the max that you could put on a 20 amp breaker. And that's important to know because if you overload the breaker, if you plug these into, these are both plugged into a power strip right here. Normally these power strips are 15 amp breakers on them. So if you plug in four of these on a 15 amp breaker, you're gonna pop the breaker. It may not pop right away, but it will pop. Now that's not a bad thing, but just avoid that. Because again, the last thing you'd want is to plug all these in, which they will all work on it, depending on how many you plug in. When the heating element starts heating up, that's when the most of the power is drawn. And then you're gonna start getting those wires inside your cores heating up, and then it's gonna pop the breaker. The breaker's designed to do that for those of you that don't know that. So whether it's on the power strip, whether it's on your power panel, wherever it is, that's something that you wanna be aware of. Now, the other thing, and I know I'm kind of getting on the line here, but this is all super important on how to use a cold spark machine. More importantly, how to use a Chauvin sparkler. When you put these in and you plug these into the wall, do not run these on GFI circuits. GFI circuits or CGFI, forget what they're called, but I believe it's one of those nomenclatures, how acronyms, if you will. Now, those are the ones that have the buttons on the actual power uh, plug itself that goes into the wall. I'm totally calling that wrong here, but you get what I'm saying, and the focus of this is on the concept, not the nomenclature of it. So when you plug these in, if you have a, a plug on the wall that you plug something into and it has those buttons on it, avoid that. The reason being is those are made to operate where if one of the poles is off and, and they're not equal power, it flips the breaker and that's made so that if, you're if you touch it, anything else, if, if it, it basically is made to, to break right at that plug. So I don't need to go into details about that here, but these will trick those. So do not contact us and tell us that they don't work because that's the first thing we're gonna ask is if it's one of those plugs. Avoid that at all costs. Just use a regular plug. Those in the production world, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. So now that you have your spark machine set up, 
you run your power cords, you make sure that your cords, you don't, you only have so many of these on your circuit. You know your circuits, I don't. 20 amp, 15 amp, you do, you have to do the calculation. And on the back of the machine, right here, it tells you how many watts. Every machine's different. The Chauvin Sparkler is 480 watts. It says right here. So the 480 divided by the 110, 120, give yourself some room. Make sure that you don't overload the circuits. Now the full size sparkler, not the minis, the Chauvin Sparkular full size, like these are Chauvin Sparkular minis, the full size sparkler, Chauvin Sparklers, Jesus, it could be a tongue twister. You get it though. Those are gonna draw a little bit more. I wanna say those are around the 700 or 800 watts. Those output a little bit more. The reason being bigger heating element, larger motor inside and larger blower. Those three things are going to make the machine draw more power. So keeping all of that in mind, now you know how to do your calculations. So you take these spark machines, you put them where you're gonna put them, you hook your cords up. Like I said, I run DMX cables. You're gonna plug the DMX cables in and then you're gonna turn the machine on. Now, I'm gonna turn this one off and on and We'll probably zoom in on this video that you can see here exactly what the panel says. The panel is going to say the serial number of the machine, how much total time in hours and minutes or minutes and seconds, I forget which one it is. Uh, let's go ahead and check this here. So turn it off and on. We're gonna see, yep, the serial number, hours and minutes, and then the time remaining. The time remaining is the time on the machine. So I'm gonna cycle the power on this one, and then I'm gonna sit and wait because we could show on the video here exactly what it looks like for you guys to see it. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll turn this off real quick. There you go. Now you can see it. So if we didn't zoom in, we'll flash another section of the video in there so you can see what it looks like. But the time remaining is the time that's on the machines. So we have another video. I'll put a link in the description on how these cards work. The magical cards. So you have your cards, you have your your granules here. The granules go in the machine and make the machine work. The cards themselves add the time to the machine. Why they do this? So that these come as a set. Typically after many tests, you say, okay, well, these are roughly about four minutes in, in use of granules. So we're gonna add four minutes to this card. The cards cannot fluctuate the time. I've said this on other videos, the cards are a set time. However, the way you use the machine is a fluctuation because not every single pack of granules is gonna be used evenly as you use the machine. So with that said, you get a brand new machine with zero time on it. Probably not gonna happen because we run tests and the factories do tests on these. So you'll get some time and that's an added bonus to you. Can't guarantee it though. But what I'll say is this, if this machine was at zero, I use this card, if I just put the granules in, the machine's not gonna work. With the remote or the DMX cable, not gonna work. Now, if I go ahead and take the card, scan the card on the back of the machine, right where you see this RFID sign, you just tap the card right there. It's a one-time use card and then the card's pointless. You could throw it away after that. Just make sure that time gets on the machine. The way to check that, the machine will notify you that the, tar the time has been added. If not, turn the machine off, turn it back on again and see how much time is on the machine and that'll tell you if that card's been added. Now, the card will add four minutes to the machine on these small sparkler minis. So now you have four minutes to operate this machine without it not being able to operate anymore, regardless how many granules are in the machine or not. I will tell you right now, most likely you will use the granules before that four minutes is up. And so you go and you get another card and granule set. You add the granules in or you don't, you scan the card in. You're probably going to add another, you know, have an extra minute left. So now you, let's hypothetical here. Let's say you have a minute left on the first one, a minute left on the second one. You do that two more times. Well, now you have four minutes of time left on the machine, but you don't have any granules. And you're going to keep getting the pack of granules in the card and it's going to add more time. Well, with us, you see where I'm going with this? With us, you can contact us and say, hey, my machine has this many minutes on it. I just want some granules and we can make that happen. Okay, other companies may not do that. Now, 
I just have to explain this because I want to make sure I convey this and articulate it well because a lot of people get misunderstood on what the card does and what the granules do. In a perfect world, the granules would match up with the card and you would use them both at exactly four minutes. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect world because of the way these machines are built for many other reasons also. Now, I have other videos, link in the description as well, where we go in the detail on how a spark machine works and cold spark machine cleaning process. Those videos, I go inside the machine and you see the mechanics of them. You see how they work inside, the different corkscrews, the motors, the blowers, the heating elements. All of that dictates how many granules you use, how much granules you use, as well as your use. So with that said, now you know the difference between these. So what you'll do is you'll have your machine set up. I know I'm just going right forward here. Plug all the cords in, you plug the power cables in, make sure your DMX controller is plugged in. Again, we're using a Shave OB40. Now you turn the machines on, you cycle through the, uh, the, the, men the menu there, like I showed you earlier, and then you're ready to go. The machine will say DMX address. I have address number one set on my controller because address number one is set right here. These are on the same channel, so they're gonna work at the same time when I activate the DMX channel here. If I didn't want them to, I would set this one to channel one, and I would set this one to channel three. Now, why would I do that? And the reason I would do that, which actually, I'm gonna do this to show you here. So, I am going to setting, you can't see this, but I wanna, sh I wanna show you this because if this one set the channel three, which it automatically does that. So one, three, five, seven, so on and so forth. And this one set the channel one. Well, because of that, and again, if you already know DMX, sorry, if you don't, kind of a crash course real fast. So I activate channel one, only one of them works. I activate channel three, now the other one works. Now, if I go back to this one and I set this one back to channel one, press enter, you wanna do mode, select the channel, and then press enter, buttons are down there, you can see it for yourself. They both work. So, then you use it, you have a grand old time, people love it, they're just blown away from it, literally. Now, make sure that these are not under anything where they're gonna hit the ceiling, they're not under any drapery, these are just safety precautions, I have to state that on this video. So you're done using the spark machines and now it's time to put them away. What you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and I'm not gonna do it on this video, but you'll take a container. I would recommend turning the machine off. So you would turn the machine off. I'm not gonna do it on the video, but you would turn the machine off. You would open this door. Now, I did not tell you this earlier, but when you, enter, when you put these granules in, just to kind of go back on this video, you wanna put them in, open the, the door here, the little trap door, if you will, and there's a hole. You put the granules in there. You do not put them in the area that has a white circle. So preface here, you do not put them in this area. You put them in the other area that has the door on it, okay? Now, kind of got ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. If you're watching the whole video, which we always recommend you do, then you'll get that. You'll be able to piece together this puzzle. So now you're at the point where you want to take these down. You want to pack them up. You're going to open the door. I would recommend turning them off. You don't have to. And you'll take your machine and you'll turn your machine upside down and empty the granules from here into a container that is dirt-free, lint-free, has nothing in it, that you can reuse those granules again and put those granules in a bag, get the air out of the bag, and seal the bag. You'll do that with both machines. So now there's no granules in the top of the reservoir on either machine. What you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna come back. You're gonna turn the machine back on, let it heat back up. If you are that type of person that would rather skip that step, Probably won't hurt the machine, we just don't recommend it. So you could leave the machine on and empty it out, but we don't recommend that, again. Now, I've emptied these, okay? I did not do it on the video, but for the sake of the video, I would have emptied these. You go back to your machine. This one is already empty. This one, as you can see now, is empty. You go back, I move it, tap it just a little bit. That is what you wanna see on your spark machine when you are done using it, regardless of what model you have. 
whether it's an Ice Spark FX, a Pro X Blitz, a Pro X Blitz Mini, a Phoenix, uh, Sparktacular, Sparkular, Chauvin Sparkular, any of these brands out there, this is what you want to do after every use. You wanna empty the machine out, and then you wanna turn the machine back on, and you wanna let all the sparks out. I will show it to you again until you see this. Now, don't put your hand over it, but what I'm showing you is that there is air coming out. The chamber is clear. Every piece inside is clear. The heating element is clear. Now it's time to go ahead, turn the machine off. You can, regardless of what manner you take this out, we go ahead and take the DMX cable out, okay? And the power con cable. Now, where's our rag? I go ahead, I like wiping my machines down. I like keeping my machines real clean so they look real nice. I don't think somebody's gonna come to an event and go, oh my God, that guy's machines are like all dirty. Well, things get dirty in the production world. You know that. Wipe the machines down. Let the machines cool off before you put them back in to a uh, cold spark machine case or a flight case or a box or whatever you're gonna do. Let them cool off for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then you're good to go. I've taken my cables off. I always say this, you can run your hand down the face of the machine. That means all the cables are out and everything's good to go. And now you're able to put your spark machine away. Until next time, the DMX, the cables, all of that, that's a whole nother video. Don't need to show you that. But that is how you use a cold spark machine and that is cold spark machine instructions, if you will, with the um, Sparkular Mini. Chauvin Sparkular Mini. How to use a Chauvin Sparkular Mini. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment in the section below if you would like any additional videos or if something was not explained thoroughly enough. I'm okay with making another video on that. Thanks for watching Cryo Effects. And do me a favor, if you like this channel, like, share, and of course, subscribe. We have more videos coming up. This is how to use a cold spark machine or how to use a Chauvin Sparkular Mini. They all pretty much operate the same. So you could take this and apply this techniques to your videos. Until next time.